I'm going to talk a lot about technology today and the advancements that we have made in hearing aids, I would say, in the last five years. So let's get started now. <laughs> There has been quite a few advancements that weren't in existence when I was wearing <laughs> hearing aids. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so, and I'm glad. Uh, some of the advancements I'm not sure about, um, you know, but but let's go through them. Uh, the ones that that we know about are are quite a few. You know, hearing aid activity tracking. So they have, you know, AI systems and they have, you know, special sensors, uh, you know, artificial intelligence that allows you to track physical activity and cognitive health as measured by hearing aid use. So, so that's kind of good to see how much you are in sound, you're not in sound, um, you know. So, so that's kind of cool. Uh, I did not have that when I was using <laughs> hearing aids, I don't think. <laughs> Rechargeable hearing aid solutions, and I, I love this one, and I'll tell you why. Because those little batteries that we had to purchase, the disposable ones were the only ones in existence, um, were being thrown in supposedly recyclables, uh, but they weren't. They were going into the trash and then into the rivers, and then the fish were eating them or just out there on the ground and the birds were eating them. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know if it had any positive effect, but I doubt it. <laughs> so, you know, the animals out there were really eating them, thinking that they were a piece of food. So I am really glad that we have rechargeables now uh, to save the environment, save the fish, save the birds, <laughs> and, you know, keep them out of the environment, truly. So if you struggle with knowing, you know, are you going to use rechargeable or disposable, that's for you to kind of think about it. I use disposable only when I'm traveling to kind of give me that peace of mind that, you know, the, the cochlear implant batteries, disposable batteries, um, last three days, about, you know, two days and a half or three days. So... You know, I'm, I'm happy with that, and it just gives me a peace of mind when I'm traveling. Uh, full, rich sound quality. I'm not sure. It just depends on the person. It really depends on the person because we all hear different, and our brains, you know, hear sound differently. So full, rich, and sound quality, I think that they're attempting uh, to work on that. You know, and it says our latest hearing aids provide better and sound quality for both speech and music. I, I think it's, it has improved. It, it, that has improved. Um, but it just depends on how your hearing is. That, you know, will you hear better, full, rich sound quality? I don't know. <laughs> depends on which direction your hearing is going. And, and what's going on. So it, that, that's, that depends. <laughs> Personalized listening experience, yes, um, by customizing the relationship of soft sound to loud sound for each individual, your hearing professional can greatly enhance listening comfort with today's hearing aids. And yes, that, that, I think that existed, you know, even in, during my time when I was using hearing aids. Uh, as I've said before, you know, if I heard a very loud sound, it, I would get dizzy, I'd be on the floor. Uh, and that's the way my hearing was going. And so, you know, I if I heard a very loud sound, a very high-pitched sound, that would just knock me out. And so there was a way in which they could block those sounds so that that wouldn't happen to me. So in, in, in even in my cochlear implants, they have that in so that um, I don't think <laughs> to fall on the ground. So, but when a loud sound does happen, I might not be very aware of it. So uh, of what's going on, some people have to tell me, but I prefer that than being flat on my face. <laughs> so, <laughs> 
So that's, that's really important. <laughs> Comfortable sound and conversation in every environment. Yes, I think they've worked really hard uh, to block out the background sound that we have so much trouble with. It's still, you know, they're still working on it. I think, you know, it's still when I'm in a restaurant, I struggle a little bit when there's a lot of background noise. So I, I'm sure that, you know, so they say a new advanced operating system identifies the environment you are in and automatically focuses on preserving speech. So that, it just depends on how you are arranged if you're with three people, five people, 10 people. So, and then you have background noise. So it, it just depends on how you're doing with your hearing and how much practice you've put into being in noisy environments and being able to hear. So, you know, comfortable sound and conversation in every environment is questionable depending on the person, really. Enjoy conversation, enjoy the music. Now this one, enjoy the music, really depends on the brain in a lot of circumstances. So I know they're trying to work on music and I, I would say it's taken me a long time to hear, hear music in a way I can understand it. So uh, I want to, you know, as a, as a person who plays a guitar, plays a couple of different instruments, I haven't quite, I quite gotten there. And I use cochlear implants now, but still the cochlear implants, you know, struggle to help me hear the real tones, the real notes that, that I'm seeking for. So um, it just depends on your, your brain, your practice. Uh, can you hear music? Can you execute music and understand what you're playing? That's a whole different dynamic. So I think we're still not quite there with enjoy the music. <laughs> I think, you know, hearing aids might be better in terms of being able to interpret music. I know cochlear implants are not there yet. So music, the way you like it, um, music and speech are very different. So like singing and hearing music or singing and interpreting music or playing music would be a whole different dynamic, I think. And, and I struggle with that. I'm a musician, so uh, not professional, but I've dedicated myself to music all my life. So be, having lost that is very hard. I can hear music and understand it, and it sounds good, but for me to play music uh, is a totally different thing. So I still have to practice a lot in that to be at peace the way it sounds. I know the notes, I know the chords, uh, but, but <laughs> it doesn't quite sound right yet. So, you know, I think we're still working on those pieces of music, uh, listening and understanding music. I think we're getting there, but executing music and singing uh, are two different things. So enjoy hearing your phone. Now, absolutely, I have to give it hands down that we have gotten that straightened out and it, I don't have to use text anymore. Uh, I hear very well on the phone. Uh, you know, I use my, I think it's T-Coil <laughs> or Bluetooth, not sure which one, but <laughs> it is great, you know. Uh, it says use your iPhone to hear phone calls directly through your hearing aids without an, an intermediate device, which we had for a long time. Uh, and, and then all of a sudden I didn't have to use that and that was awesome. That was with hearing aids. So once I went to cochlear implants, it, it improved uh, enormously. So I think that that piece of technology is awesome right now. So um, that is very cool. We can hear very well on the, you know, you have to practice though. You do have to practice. So. Alrighty, so with phones, we're doing great. Uh, you have control in your hand, which is very true. Most, most hearing aids now have apps which you can go in and see what's working, see what's not working, and, um, and, and fix it or change it, or it even cochlear implants. Uh, with our cochlear processors, we have an app and we can 
check the sound and, and other things. We can change a program. So, so that, is, that is awesome. I think it's helpful. Um, a couple of times, you know, the app has to update, and that could cause some little issues, but not a big deal. Uh, apps are great. It gives a little bit more control to the person who's using the hearing aid. <laughs> Your hearing aid now uh, knows where you are, which is a little spooky. <laughs> I would say, ooh. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it doesn't know exactly where you are. It just knows the environment you're in. So that's I think that's what they mean. <laughs> so it knows if you're at work or if you're at a restaurant or if you're at a meeting. So, <coughs> so the hearing aid will adjust and, and adapt. Uh, sometimes I can work, sometimes not. Just depends on the person, um, how much volume they need, uh, so and how much volume they don't need. Because uh, sometimes, you know, when I was visiting the family, I had some some issues, you know, at restaurants. Uh, but they would pass the message on. To, there was quite a few members, family members. <laughs> they would pass the message on down until it got to me. So <laughs> Because they knew that far, I wouldn't be able to hear. But <laughs> so it, it, it can calculate, it can figure out what the noise ratio is and uh, adjust and adapt. Invisible options. Now, this one, I, I don't know if I agree or not. Just depends. Hearing aids continue to get smaller and more powerful. I don't believe that. <laughs> I don't believe that. And the reason why is that they would have to leave out some things. I think this is a little bit more promotional than anything else. Um, I, I, you know, they would have to leave some tools out. Um, and that's why I say don't get the little tiny ones because the, the audiologists would have fewer tools to work with. And that is true today. So, you know, I, I feel like this is more promotional than anything else. Um, invisible, you know, why would you want something invisible, you know, when, when it's just true and y you have to face it up front. Um, and maybe some people are just not ready yet, but, but I don't know. Invisible, I, I don't agree with that. Um, tiny, tiny hearing aids, I don't agree. Uh, it, you know, this is my opinion, but I know that smaller the hearing aid, the fewer tools you have. And, you know, I think the audiologists know this, and they'll probably say, yes, Lisa, that's true. So, so I don't know. You have to think twice about the size. I would say medium size is, is the best because it has everything you need and gives more room for the audiologist to work with. Everyone enjoys TV at a comfortable volume level. Well, that depends. <laughs> um, it, it could be, you know, and there are tools uh, for streaming TV, but those tools are still up there with costly. So, yes, you know, plug our wireless TV streamer and the Surflink and Media2 streamer all these cost a lot, and you know, even for cochlear implants, we have a streamer, but it's expensive, folks. It's expensive, so you know, we have the tool, but it needs to come down in cost. So, we might have all these new tools we can use, but it needs to be available and reachable for those of us who are experiencing hearing loss. Portable and personalized wireless accessories. Yes, we do have those. Um, like I have the Mini Mic 2 for the cochlear implants, and I'm sure that uh, a variety of uh, hearing aids also have some uh, tools where they can hear directly, you know, from their phone or watch a game or, you know, all those kind of things directly or with a tool. Surf or Surflink, I don't know what that plugs into, but Surflink Mobile 2 it works with your hearing aids to talk on your cell phone 
and listen to music or just do better at the card game. <laughs> so, so we do have tools. I, I don't know if that comes with the hearing aid or you have to purchase it later. But again, it's cost that concerns me. It's not reachable for everyone. Durable and dependable hearing aids. Yes, the external parts especially have improved. You know, the <coughs> we used to have to take care of so much of the hearing aid so it wouldn't get dust and we had to clean it off and brush it off and you know, all those kind of things. We had to change molds often. Uh, so it was, it was an issue. Uh, or bring it to the uh, audiologist to clean it. Uh, so, and they're a little bit more sturdy in terms of rain. If it, you get caught in the rain or whatever, you know, it, it'll survive better than the older hearing aids. So yes, we have better, the hearing aid externally is, is built better. So I think for the technicians that investigate and work hard every day, to figure out how to, you know, build a, a better shell on on the hearing aid. <coughs> Customizable tinnitus relief. Now, this did not exist when I had hearing aids. I had to listen to external sounds to get some relief from my tinnitus. Uh, so, <coughs> so, but now Starkey's hearing aids uh, feature our advanced multiplex tinnitus technology. So, you know, this technology allows you and your hearing professional to customize a soothing sound stimulus designed to help manage your tinnitus, which is great, uh, but it's not all hearing aids. So, uh, and that's good to have a program, a fourth program, a third program, to be able to turn that on and, and calm your tinnitus down or distract you from, from the tinnitus for a while. Or, you know, just use external apps or, you know, music or static on your TV or static on your radio, which will also be helpful. Uh, there are apps on your phones that can also uh, do, um, <coughs> that are programs for tinnitus. So either way, if you don't have this specialized program, uh, you can also find it, you know, externally. And there's a lot of apps that do this. So, so either way. So this e these are the upgrades that phones, <laughs> phones. <laughs> well, phones are with us, yes. <laughs> but the hearing aids have uh, improved. The technicians have improved throughout and uh, that's, that's awesome. Um, we need those updates, uh, you know, those upgrades. So, you know, it, and it's quite a few advancements. Smaller size, rechargeables, Bluetooth, improved microphone technology, automatic adjustment of hearing aids, wireless capabilities, Artificial intelligence, the AI is working in uh, our hearing aids. Augmented experience, which is the hearing aid can use two processors to focus on background noise and voices. Uh, 4D sensor is the hearing aids uh, can detect the wearer's movements and personalized sound amplification based on those movements. So that's kind of cool. So folks, those are the um, upgrades so far that we've had in hearing aids, at least in the last five years that I know. And it's awesome. You know, people will say, oh, I don't like hearing aids, blah, blah, blah. They gotta try them. They're digital and they have a lot of, a lot of, you know, upgrades these days that would help a lot. Sorry, almost died there. So, <laughs> so those are the updates. Um, if you didn't know, because it's a lot, and the audiologist can't go through the entire list with you. Um, you know, only if you asked, and you know, even if you asked, there's a lot to explain. So I just wanted to go through it here, so you know that in two, 2024 we are gifted in terms of the technology that now has been squeezed into those 
hearing aids <laughs> to help us hear better. <laughs> I like that term, squeezed in, because hearing aids are pretty small these days. And you got to put these chips in. And I'm sure there's a person out there, a technician, who's going blind trying to <laughs> squeeze all the technology on that chip. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, my comments are very, are my opinion, my personal opinion. And you might have your own opinion and your own experiences, which would be great if you wanted to put them down <coughs> for others. You know, and, and, and state which, which of these upgrades have helped you the most, uh, which upgrades do you love the most uh, on hearing aids. Because some people have walked away from hearing aids and don't want to use them. But there's so much these days that they're incredible. They do a lot for us. And I have cochlear implants, and, you know, the, the software in there is also you know, being increased and improved and helping us more and more each day. And I don't have to change the internal component that's been implanted. They just uh, download it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> I'm downloadable. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah. <coughs> so those are the updates. And I, I think that we need to thank the technicians more than anything because they test and they test and they retest and they fail and they retest <laughs> so that we can have the best hearing possible uh, despite our condition. So I wanted to go through that. Um, I, I don't think I've done that before. Uh, I if I did, it was a long time ago and, <laughs> and it's been a while. So these are the new updates and, and, and please share what you like about the updates and what update has helped you the most. All right, folks. Well, thank you so much for sharing these moments with me. Um, I was a little uh, down and out yesterday, so I need to catch up with the other, um, the other channel. It has to do with uh, wheelchairs. It's called uh, World Wheelchair Warriors. If you want to go over there, if you use a wheelchair, uh, then you can go over there and see all the stuff that I've posted there. <laughs> so, But anyway, feel free to uh, look at the videos that are going to show up there. Uh, do likes or uh, subscribe or any of those things will comment. Any of those things will help the channel continue to grow and uh, for me to be able to continue to, to be around and assist you in giving information, sharing information, uh, any resources I find. So, so that'll be awesome. And share with all of you, which is what the channel is all about, to be able to share our experiences with our hearing, a lack of hearing, about hearing aids, uh, about cochlear implants. So come on over, and I'll see you in the next video.